Let's move on. My name is Joseph Rickert. I'm with Revolution Analytics. I'm a data scientist and community manager there. And that means I spend a good bit of time working with our users and our user groups around the world. So today I'd like to talk to you, talk with you about some, something we're doing towards reproducibility in the R world. But first, I'd like to set some background. And um, this slide indicates just how popular R has become um, over the last couple of years. And this is extraordinary, I think, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, R is changing. There's so much work in the community to enhance and adapt R to the new world. But the other part is that the world itself is changing, so that when you see R appearing you know, in line with all these heavy-duty uh, computer languages, you know that it means that um, the interests of people in computing are gravitating more towards the statistical computing aspects of things. And here you see R is now become a, um, a major source in data science. And this is also extraordinary because although there's overlap, the, the communities of hardcore statisticians in the universities and the practicing data scientists like many of you, you know, they're not actually the same. And to see R doing well there is, um, is really nice. And then this last part, if you pay attention to one slide that I show you today, it should be this slide. Um, and you can see how much skills in R is worth. And please, uh, if any of you manage to use this for a salary negotiation, let me know. So companies using R. It is not surprising that the Google, Facebook, and Twitter, the leading edge data mining companies are using R. And they use it in both a casual way, just because people are familiar with it, but also it's become part of their infrastructure. So they're the leaders. Uh, a company like Google does a lot to make sure that R works with their systems in a rock solid way. And then there's the second generation of companies that would adopt R. These were the leading edge financial people. So they, they were extremely pleased with the model building capability, the time series analysis in R, and they were early, early adopters of R. And credit risk, insurance companies, as you would expect. But th this is now um, the interesting part. Here's a company that's part of you know, heavy machinery um, a really um, traditional kind of company moving towards um, uh, analytics and wanting to adopt these leading edge tools. So this indicates John Deere and Monsanto, these kinds of companies becoming um, our users, indicates how it, R is becoming you know, a bedrock tool in corporate America. And then also with nonprofit organizations. And then as part of big science. So when you have the FDA um, using R as part of the submission process, you, you're realizing that the tools underneath this open source project support life and death efforts. And then here's some more big science. So you have the big science use of R. Now, at Revolution, our mission is to try to bring R to um, corporate America. And as part of that, we do a lot to support the source of all the creativity, which is the open source project itself. And we try to contribute in various ways. It's been um, Revolution people have written many of the early parallel computing packages. We have a project, an open source project, that we're leading on Hadoop, the R Hadoop project. And we're always looking for contributors and committers to that. And we do a lot of uh, community support with user groups and meetups and events around the world. So we, we think it's important in, in our mission to bring R to corporate America to work with the base, the people who are creative, and to build tools that are um, important. So one little area that we have um, identified where we can make a contribution is reproducibility. So here you see two definitions. One is more talking about how reproducibility being hard of the scientific method. 
And then the second part, which comes from Roger Pang's Coursera course, is, it emphasizes its practicality in any kind of production work you're going to do. Now, why do we care? Uh, you probably have seen this, but this is um, this was an event that happened a couple years ago that ended a, indicated a, a real breakdown in trust and as well as reproducibility. So here there were researchers who had actually faked data. And the two statisticians that you see became the heroes in a process to, tr while trying to reproduce the experiments, realized that something was fundamentally wrong. And what you would like to see everywhere in, in science and in medical papers is to be able to read a paper and get the data and get the code and be able to run those models yourself, to be able to assure yourself that it works. And of course, you want to do a similar kind of thing on maybe a less dramatic scale uh, in your business or in your own projects. So here, this is the, the kind of problem that we set out to solve, the small steps. So you have some scripts, and they work. You do your project. You go to share them, and it's, uh-oh, they don't work. And, and many times, the reason for that is that people make changes to packages, or you don't have the right version of the package. So what we've done is build a, uh, an environment here that uh, is part of the open source effort. So the first thing we did was, was build a, um, a distribution of the R language. So it's just R 3.1.1 now, compiled uh, with the Intel math kernel libraries. So we, we, it's a matter of, um, you know, while we're at it, hey, why not make it really fast? But what we needed was something that would point to a static mirror. So when you download distribu this distribution, you get only the packages that were active on CRAN as of the 1st of October 2014. Now that date will change as we put more releases, but when you do that, you know you're starting with a stable base. Then we had to build this server that points to a static mirror. Then what we had to do is make sure that every day we take snapshots of all the packages in R. So, you know, at midnight, we, we just keep going and take um, one snapshot after another of our packages. And then there's a function to be able, uh, we call it the checkpoint function. It's an R package you can find on CRAN that enables you to, um, to use the snapshot. And, and here are two scenarios that, um, that I think will resonate with you. The first is you imagine a corporate-wide situation where um, instead of having people willy-nilly downloading packages and distributions of R and, and um, all on their own, and then you have no control over who has what, you know, the IT manager's nightmare. Now if you download, uh, if you have everybody download this distribution of um, RRO, then they'll all get packages that, you know, the base and recommended packages from October 1st 2014, and then on a user-by-user -user basis, each user for each of his or her projects will download those packages that are appropriate for that project. So you have a baseline that's for everybody, and then you have an element of control to see how packages are, are downloaded and used. In the second scenario, you don't need RRO, you, can, you don't need that distribution, but you can make use of this checkpoint server and this uh, checkpoint um, package and function to share your scripts. So imagine in the cartoon situation where, where you had um, people sharing scripts and the, the colleague was left on her own to figure out what packages to use. In this scenario, you give your colleague the scripts to use and she builds a package, you know, a project, maybe an R Studio project, so she has everything in the directory. Then she loads the checkpoint package, and it will go, the checkpoint function, when she runs it, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, will go through, interrogate all the scripts, and then load those packages that are appropriate for her project 
as of a date that you specify when you start the function. So it looks something like this. So you have this, you, you invoke this library checkpoint and then you give it a date. So this, this, we think this will help with this reproducibility problem and it gives benefits to both the um, people who are writing packages, want to make sure that they're testing the stability of the ecosystem that they're using at that particular time. And of course it confers, it confers um, benefits to the user, the person that you're sharing packages with. So this <coughs> is just a practical example. I had here a um, project where I was playing with H2O and uh, you can see it down there as one of the um, packages that gets loaded. So I had this library, I gave it a date of, um, it was uh, the 14th of the month and it went through and automatically loaded all those packages, the same version as of the 14th of the month. So now, in that way I'm pretty much assured that um, you know, I can hand my project around the company and everybody will get it to run. And then what I'd like to leave you with here is just where you can get all this. So there's a website, we call it the uh, Managed R Archive Network and you can go there, you can get the distribution of R I talked about if you want to, you can get, um, download the checkpoint package from there and there's also quite a few tools for exploring CRAN packages and what have you that you might find useful. So that's it. Yes. Yes, yes. Checkpoint's just a CRAN package. So this is all open source GPL licenses. We have a need, I'm in a large enterprise company, we have a need for something like this internally. One of the ideas is that our legal department has approved some licenses in CRAN and others are not approved. So, for example, I have a script that will check licenses and it, it, if it's, it's on the acceptable list, they'll load it. If not, it won't. So have you worked with enterprises? Are you aware of efforts to work with enterprises on this uh, well, additional we, features? Well, we do that kind of work all the time where we'll build an internal a repository for customers, but if you're asking me, um, you know, could Checkpoint check licenses, that's a really interesting thing. It doesn't do that now, but, but that would be an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, I'll share the script with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, then thank you for your time. <laughs>